on guys, Joe with OMGRC.com. So today, doing a throwback Thursday for you guys. And figure I was kind of digging around through a plastic container, storage containers, and I found some stuff. So this is my old race shirt that I used to wear this back probably like right into sixth grade in middle school. So uh, I think I won this when I was, so this is a team associated. This says 1991 that's on it. I'm guessing somewhere right around that time period, maybe been, I maybe got it in 92 or something, or maybe uh, nine, yeah, 91, somewhere right around in there. I think it even says 91 on it. So uh, yeah, I'm just gonna give you like kind of a little background as far as to where I've been, you know, with the RC stuff anyhow, give you a little bit of background on it. So there's been a few other RC cars prior to my Tyco Turbo Hopper. This isn't the one I had as a kid. I got this one from an awesome dude called Idaho RC Dad. He's on Instagram. And he posted some of these cars up. And I was like, holy crap, man, that's one of the cars. I used to have one of those back in the day. But I had sold it to my neighbor. And we used to run RC cars by sold. There was, anyway, there was a, the brothers. And one of them, he wasn't really into the RC stuff too much. So he's like, oh, I'd like to have an RC car. So I was like, all right, well, I'll sell you this one. I think I sold it for 20 at the time, but I, you know, I paid like 50 bucks. I got it from Toys R Us at the time. So this was really cool. I did a video on it already, but really cool that I was able to acquire another one of these. So that was really awesome. So yeah, uh, it doesn't really, I don't think it worked. I tried using it before in the radio, like it does forward and back and it doesn't turn or it does something weird. I know you have to, when it's going, you can turn the wheels if you didn't. It doesn't turn the wheels if um, you had to stand still. But yeah, nonetheless, so that was, the beginning, I had a friend down the road that uh, he had a kangaroo, if I'm not mistaken, that was the name of it, which was another buggy. It's like, it was a pretty decent sized buggy. It was still like a 110 scale buggy. And uh, I was like, oh man, I want that. But I started looking into car action. And at the time, uh, you know, Team Associate was huge. And, uh, but I couldn't really afford Team Associate stuff. And I was just really just trying to build my knowledge up as far as RC stuff, because I had no clue. So I ended up, after going from this Tyco, I bought myself a kit. I was like, well, let's learn this stuff, really. That's kind of where I was at. So I can kind of build it up. So I didn't really have too many of the RTR kits at the time. Most of them were always kits. I, that's all I can remember was kits. You didn't buy a car off the shelf and just run it. You gotta put it together, put your own stuff in there. So that was really what I liked about the hobby at the time. Um, so. I got into, now this is my, this is not, this is a reproduction from Tamiya. And so I bought this one maybe like less than a year ago. But it's not the Super G. I had the Super G version of this Grasshopper. So the Grasshopper 2 Super G. But um, this one's got the smaller motor. It doesn't go as fast for sure. It's got like a 380 motor that's in there. So it's a little dude that's in it. But it does have the ability to go with the bigger motor if you wanted to. But anyway, that was just kind of giving you an example. So uh, these stickers have been kind of changed, if I'm not mistaken. Some of them are a little bit different uh, from the Super G. So yeah, but this is a shirt that I used to race with. So it was really cool. Uh, and this is a car that I, and this is a shirt that I would you know, go to the races with. So I was like, oh man, I can't believe I found this shirt. So that was really cool. And then I used, man, I can't believe how of good a condition this thing's still in. But I was really nice with my stuff. Other than when I raced, I was kind of like, I was aggressive. So. Yeah, this is the old 75 megahertz Fataba Magnum Jr. <laughs> so nothing crazy. They had used to have like, I think they were called like PCM, something like that. And they had like another like big old piece over here. You'd open it up and you could fine tune things. I think it was for like glitches and stuff like that or whatever. I'm not exact. You guys can let me know in regards to it. Never owned it because it was expensive. And I was like, this works. You know, you'd beat some of the guys that ran those. So it was just a matter of skill. So it doesn't matter always like, what you have it's how you drive the car too so because some people always have better skills than others so yeah just kind of remember that too just because you don't have the best doesn't mean that you're not competitive so um and this is the uh novak and this was the old old school nickel cadian battery type of uh, electronic speed controller but nonetheless electronic speed controller pretty small little dude anyhow and i did ha i used to have my novak charger I had a power supply and everything like that. I had just sold that. And then this has been, it's probably been over a year ago that I had sold my Novak. Yeah, it's been a couple of years probably. It was in pristine condition too. So I think I sold it for like 50 bucks or something like that. So, I mean, it even smelled pretty new. <laughs> it had the instructions, all that. 
so yeah, this is, um, so let me get into this shirt here, kind of give you that extra little timeline. It's a little bit on the cringy side of it, but it is what it is, because I, I didn't even know I used to have it. So the cars that are on here, so the top one, the truck, right? That's the RC10T. Then you have like the GT, GTP, I think is, you guys can correct me on that one, but I think it's the GTP. Then you have the RC10, and that could have been like, let's call that the gold pan edition. So I had the two top ones, the truck and the car. And then my friend had, uh, my friend Eric, he had the team associated the gold pan edition, which I asked him like, hey, do you still have it? He's like, no, I thought I gave that to you, to sell or whatever. And I was like, dude, I never got it from you. So I was really bummed. I don't know what happened to his car, but I was so wanting to buy that from him too. And no, I know you can get them on eBay or whatever. It's not the, it's not the same when, when it's like, that's how we not only became friends and stuff like that into the RC stuff, it was just like, I wanted that car. You know, there's a difference between you can buy the same one. It's not the same exact feeling as when it comes to having that car that, you, you know, anyway, you know, you have history with. So anyway, that's that. But uh, so this GTP car uh, was, it had a saddle packs on it. So it had three cells on each side of it. So I would race that one and it's more aerodynamic than this. Uh, I think this is a Thunderbird if I'm not mistaken. I think so with the front grill. Yes, definitely a Thunderbird. So I would race people that would have the Thunderbird with my GTP car and uh, you know, I'd start winning. They're like, oh, you win because you have your GTP car. So that's how you're winning all these races all the time. And I was like, okay, whatever, dude. You know, like I was just a kid, whatever, you know, want to race and I'm getting a lot, you know, from these uh, grownups telling me that I'm winning because of the sleekness of that car. So I was like, okay, let me go ahead. I'll convert my car over. So I started buying like the chassis for it. So this is a basically a mix match of different parts to get it where I liked it. This was a hot chassis at the time. That like, oh yeah, this, I don't even know what it's called at this time. I forget what this brand was. But it, this has different suspension on the front. I went ahead and went from the stock to, um, see it's been so long, I don't even remember what all the stuff was. But at the time I was like, oh man, this is, you know, getting whatever, let's say the cutting edge at the time for this car. And so it's got like a Roar 91, I think it's the uh, a stock motor. So I think it's like Iron, I don't know, it's like, I think it's Iron Man or something like that. Something like that, I don't remember. It's got a label somewhere on there. But nonetheless, um, I would go ahead, my friend and I, he had like a tire truer, so you could true the tires down because they were, the tires were actually like pretty tall. And we had to true those down because to shave that foam off there because the car would just want to roll over. It was way too much. So they, they would sell you tires that were already bigger than what you needed. I don't know why, but that's what they would do. They'd sell them to you and then you had to true those things down to the size that you wanted to. And so yeah, it was a whole game. You'd have to get matched batteries. So that's when I learned how to solder. So I was like right into elementary, into middle school, not knowing anything about soldering. It's like I need a soldering iron because I just... I paid someone to put my uh, batteries together. There was a place called like Hobby Mart uh, in here in Florida, and it's like Clearwater or something like that. Um, so I, again, the same guy that painted this car, his name Mike. I don't remember what his last name is or anything like that. But I did. I have a video of him talking about this car. Uh, it was like RCTV here in, in Pinellas County, and they broadcast it and. This guy was the one that gave him like 20 bucks. So I was in, mid in middle school. I'm like, hey, can you, can you paint my car? And he's like, yeah, I'll paint it up for you. So I brought the car down to him and everything like that, the, the actual body. And he's like, yeah, what do you want? I said, yeah, I want flame jobs. You know, I like the black and everything like that. So he's like, all right, I got it. I got a good idea what you want. It's like, heck yeah, man. So, um, so I bug him every so often like, hey, you got my car done? Because I'm really kind of wanting to run it. And anyway, so yeah, this is it. So I kept that one. The funny thing is too, this guy Dr. Dino was another, the, the, another co like co-host or whatever, part of the show between this guy Mike and Dr. Dino. They would give you like pit tips and all that kind of stuff as far as glitching. You know, these were things that you'd run into. So it was really cool little television episodes that they go over RC stuff. They started getting the planes, and I got. I was like, I don't want to do planes, but. Uh, when they did car stuff, I was always wanting to watch them. So I recorded some of those episodes and kept them on, you know, VHS at the time when you could record stuff that way. And, um, yeah, so I actually worked with the guy. I used to work for the county, and he was one of the guys I worked with. And I was like, dude, yeah, people gave him a hard time. He's like, oh, he thinks, you know, you're his idol. And I was like, but man, I mean, at the time, 
I mean, that was the guy I would watch, you know? So I was like, man, it's really cool. I liked all your tips and stuff like that too. So it was cool. So I actually worked with the guy that you used to watch on television was like, that was awesome. So really nice, really cool guy. Uh, I don't know where he's at now. This was like almost like 20 years ago when I worked with him or so. But um, but yeah, lots of good experiences with all of it. So yeah, that's kind of where I kind of want to let you guys know. You know, my little history on it. And I do have like these. I actually just watched a YouTube video today. And they, so these I had actually these, I found this shirt or shirts. I found these cars, you know, big into the Honda stuff. So I even did, I'll even grab it here anyhow. Very front heavy because the motor's all sitting up front. So that's why. It, but yeah, this is the one if you guys haven't seen it too. A little Honda Civic looking like a the old spoon sport. I'm not completely finished with it, but it's got a little brushless system that's in it. So it's kind of like OG as well, because these are like 90s cars anyhow. So it's kind of one of those like throwbacks as well. So I like it. I like it, like it, like it, like it a lot. <laughs> so appreciate you guys watching. As always, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, share it with your friends. And uh, let me know what you guys thought about this video anyhow. So I'll catch you in the next one. You guys take care and thank you again for watching. Peace.